Okay, I'm just going to do a, a quick test on my end. Um, go down the line. Um, Mark Hemmerow, can I hear you? Hi, I'm here. Okay. Uh, uh, Carrie? Yes, I'm here. Hi. Okay, Joe? Alex? I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Uh, Pete? Here. Here. Uh, Joe Masseri? Here. Here. Kathy, I heard you. Yes, you did. And Tom, I heard you. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, so we are, we are all set. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, for the residents that have joined us on the call, uh, we have a, a phone system, new phone system that we're going to be working with. Uh, we appreciate your patience and as we, we work, work through it. it. Um, this is um, the first of two meetings today. Uh, will be our special public meeting um, of April 20th, 2020. Um, and um, may I have roll call and flag salute, please? Roll call. Councilman Sakala. Here. Councilman Here. Here. Councilman Nassari. Here. Councilman Tanella. Here. Here. Deputy Mayor Peterson. Here. Mayor Barbara. Here, uh, may I ask everybody to rise and the flag, please? Pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag, to the flag of the United States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, stands one nation, one nation, one nation to God, under God, under God indivisible, 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 with liberty, liberty and justice, and justice, and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, this meeting, let me get a public notice here. Uh, a public notice in accordance with the provisions of the New Jersey and the Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10 4 1, as that please. Take notice that the Township Council of the Township of Cedar Grove will conduct a special public meeting on Monday, April 20th, 2020 at 7 p.m. via conference call and not in the council chambers of the municipal building. The purpose of this meeting is to conduct a public hearing and adopt pending bond ordinance number 20-856, pending bond ordinance number 20-857, and pending bond ordinance number 20-358. Official action will be taken. Previously scheduled staff meeting will immediately follow. The public will be able to listen to the meeting and participate in public comment by calling 1-866-305-0232 and entering the partition code 933-490 on the day and time of the meeting. Okay, just have that. Get that out of the way here. Just for the, the public education here, we're, we will have two meetings today. Um, this is the, as I just noticed noted in the, uh, the notice. This meeting will be to exclusively discuss those pending bond ordinances. At the conclusion of this meeting, when we adjourn the special public council meeting, we will then flow right into our staff meeting to start again um, with the agenda and start at the top. Any COVID-19 questions or topics will be discussed during the staff meeting and not during the special uh, meeting to address the bond ordinances. Uh, so with that being said, uh, we have three items on the, the agenda can be found online on the township's website under the government section tab. If you scroll down to the bottom, you'll be able to pull the agenda, uh, but it's a short agenda for this special public meeting. At the just some logistical uh, for this special public meeting, we're going to be going through the three bond ordinances. Um, they will be read and then there will be a, it will open up for public hears. For this particular uh, special meeting, uh, we are going to unmute all of the residents for, for only each of those public, uh, the public portion of those bond ordinances. I will then wait 10 seconds. If I do not hear any questions after the 10 seconds, I will then close that portion of the meeting, hearing no comments or questions. We will then go into each bond ordinance items 2A, 2B, and 2C and follow the same course. Um, 
if there is um, if there's anything that we missed or you couldn't unmute yourself for any reason whatsoever, um, there will be a section at the end of this special meeting uh, that will be open to any items on or off the agenda. You can then speak at that point in time as well. So with that being said, I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, jump right into items 2A to consider adoption of pending bond ordinance number 20. 856 capital improvements. A bond ordinance authorizing various general improvements for the township of Cedar Grove in the County of Essex, appropriating $1,460,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 1410 dollars $1,460,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $1,410,000 of bonds or notes to finance part of the cost thereof. Thank you, Ms. Tuss. At this point in time, I'd like to open us for public hearing for any comments or questions from the audience on this item. Uh, so at this point in time, we will unmute all of the residents on the line. And if I do not hear anything after 10 uh, seconds, uh, we will proceed to the next item. All guests have been unmuted. You will now rejoin the meeting. Now would be the time to comment if you have any comment on bond ordinance 20 856. Okay, hearing none, hearing none. I'm going to close that portion of the meeting. Would you like your guests to be able to? No, I'm going to for the adoption of pending bond ordinance. To All guests have been muted. Go ahead, bro. You will now rejoin the meeting. Ordinance to take effect as prescribed by law. Um, Ms. Stutz, did you hear that? Uh, Councilman Tanella moved. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Here, I second that. Joseph Keller. I'll second that. That was Mr. Mayor Peterson. Thank you. Can I have a roll call, please? Wait, ma'am, before you do a roll call, okay. excuse me, Ms. Stutz. Yes. Can I ask a, uh, just a question for Mr. Tucci, please, before you do the roll call? Mr. Sure. Tucci, do you I'm want sorry. to kind of give a summary of I what we're I, I, I don't hear you. You can hear me. I, I'm sorry. I, don't hear I hear you. you. I hear you. Can you hear me now? There you go. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry, Councilman. Uh, Mr. Tucci, can, can you give you like an all overview of what we're in the here? There's a lot of experience that we're looking at bond. Yes. Uh, uh, this is a $1.4 million bond ordinance, and I'll just give you a quick rundown of the items listed in the dollar amounts. We have the reconstruction of the police locker room, $90,000. Roadway overlay program, $150,000. Turf management program down at Community Park, $15,000. Building department data conversion for their computer system, $10,500. Replacement of the roof at the Department of Public Works, $27,000. Acquisition of fire safety equipment, $8,000. Police vehicle conversions, $30,000. Tree replanting program, $40,000. Acquisition of barrier-free playground equipment at Community Park, $75,000. Computer upgrades for the Finance and Tax Department, $40,000. The reason why you hear uh, conversion of data we're converting from uh, Windows 2007 to Windows 10 now. So we're going from seven to 10. Uh, curb and sidewalk improvements, $12,000. Acquisition of table and chairs for the new firehouse in South End, $10,000. Repaving of the recycling center. We've repaved the whole area that's gravel right now, $90,000. Acquisition of computer hardware and software, $15,000. Tax map upgrades, $20,000. Replacement of windows at Town Hall, $10,000. Installation of bocce court retaining wall at Community Park, $17,000. Cable TV studio upgrade equipment, $50,000. Police 911 system upgrade, $180,000. Installation of security cameras at the municipal building, $12,500. Police Record Management System, $97,000.
acquisition of signage for the new South End Firehouse, $10,000. Reconstruction of Myrtle Avenue, which we have to appropriate here, but we're getting reimbursed from a state grant, $414,000. Replacement of the Morgan House farmhouse roof, $20,000. And acquisition of electrical car charging station, $17,000. That amounts to uh, $1,460,000. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the council? Questions? Okay. Um, Ms. Bess, I have a motion and I have a second. May I have a roll call, please? Okay. Councilman Sakala? Yes. Yes. Councilman Nasseri? Yes. Yes. Councilman Tanella? Yes. Yes. Deputy Mayor Peterson? Yes. Mayor Gordo? <laughs> Yes. Okay, uh, moving on to item 2B on the agenda. Give me a second here. Okay, 2B, two, uh, two give me. This is to consider adoption of pending bond ordinance number 20 857, sewer utility improvement. A bond ordinance authorizing various sewer utility improvements for the township of Cedar Grove and the County of Essex, appropriating $280,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $280,000 of bonds or notes to finance part of the cost thereof. Thank you. Um, at this point in time, I'd like to open up this portion of the meeting for any public comments or questions on this item and this item only. Okay. for the adoption of pending ordinance, pending bond ordinance 20-857 to be published in the star ledger as past ordinance to take effect as prescribed by law. Ellie? Okay, thank you. Uh, that was the oh, amendment Gary, on the motion, I believe. Is that correct? Correct. Yes, correct. Mayor. Yes, Mayor. Second. Second, Mayor. Second, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, that was Councilman Sakala on the second. Yes. Any comments? Yeah, I just want to give a brief yeah, overview on this, like I did on the bond ordinance. Uh, this is a bond ordinance, the amount of $280,000. It's, it's for the acquisition of a new backhoe for the sewer department, $140,000. Sewer treatment plant engineering study, $45,000. Acquisition of a new mason dump truck, $75,000 and the uh, installation of storm drainage outfall screening, uh, $20,000. That's the extent of it. Thank you, Mr. Succi. Uh, any other comments from uh, the council? Okay. Uh, Ms. Sutz, may I have a roll call, please? Councilman Sakala. Councilman Sakala. Yes. Yes. Councilman Masseri. Councilman. Yes. 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 Councilman Tanella. Yes. Yes. Deputy Mayor Peterson. Yes. Mayor Vargo. Yes. Okay. Uh, item 2C on the agenda. Consider adoption of pending bond ordinance number 20-858, water utility improvements. A bond ordinance authorizing various water and utility improvements for the Township of Cedar Grove, appropriating $200,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $200,000 of bonds or notes to finance part of the cost thereof. Thank you, Ms. Dutch. 
Uh, at this point in time, I'd like to open up public comment or questions on this item and this item only. Uh, we will go ahead and unmute the line and we will proceed with uh, 10 seconds. All guests have been unmuted. You will now rejoin the meeting. Okay. All guests have been unmuted. Uh, if you'd like to comment, now would be the time on this item and this item only. So, okay, hearing none, uh, we'll close that portion of the meeting. Um, Would you like your guests to be? All guests have been muted. You will now rejoin the meeting. Mr. Tucci, any comments? Uh, yeah, just to give an overview on this ordinance. Uh, we have $60,000 for water main insertion valves. We have $75,000 for water distribution system upgrades. $15,000 for our annual leak detection survey that we have done annually. And $50,000 for water meter replacement. That's the extent of it. Thank you, Mr. Tucci. Uh, do I have a motion? Mayor, I move for the adoption of County adoption Ordinance of number 20 858 to be published in the Star Ledger as a past ordinance. That was Councilman Takashi. Thank you, Mr. Chief. Thank you, Councilman May I have a roll call, please? Councilman Sakala. Yes. Councilman Sakari. Yes. Yes. Councilman Tanella. Yes. Yes. Deputy Mayor Peterson. Yes. Mayor Vargo. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, before I move on to item three on the agenda, I just would like to remind you on the call that we're going to be continuing with our the second meeting, which is our staff meeting. Um, all COVID-19 questions. Uh, an update will be provided at that meeting. So with that being said, I'm going to open up item three. The meeting is now open to residents of the township wishing to be heard on any item on or off the agenda concerning township business. We will go with All guests have been unmuted. You will now rejoin the meeting. The lines have been unmuted. The lines have been unmuted. If you have any questions for any items on or off the agenda, please state your name and address. And we will do 10 seconds. Mayor Vargo, Lisa Snyder, Fort Granite Drive. How are you, Mrs. Snyder? Thank you for dialing in. We appreciate that, Mrs. Snyder. Did you get that? I did. I did. Hey, Kathy. Real what? quick, the two the two rooms you guys are doing for DPW and Morgan Farm, any chance either of those are going solar? The roofs for the DPW and Morgan's Farm, the question is, are any of those roofs going solar? Uh, is it, uh, that was, that I know was that part of that was part of bond ordinance two zero eight five six. Mr. Tucci, yeah. The, the um, answer, the answer to that are he, 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 these these are roof replacements. They're not solar energy projects. So the answer to that is no. No. Thank you. And then, Ms. Snyder, the, um, the roof at Morgan's Farm is a historic roof uh, that needs to be consistent with the historic character. Am I correct there? That's correct. That's correct. I guess would be, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for that. Thank you for dialing in. Most any other good. comments from the public on any item on or off the agenda? I'm going to go ahead and close that portion of the meeting. Mayor, um, for an adjournment. Do I have a motion for adjournment? This is Councilman Tanella. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Do I have a second? Councilman Tanella. Second. Second. Councilman All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We will go ahead and adjourn the special public council meeting. And we will go ahead and vote now with our council staff meeting. 
you just give me a second here to get in order. Would you like your guests to be able to unmute their own? All guests have been muted. You will now rejoin the meeting. You all will just bear with me one second. Okay. Ms. Dustin's meeting um, published date was December 28, 2019, correct? The original one was, yes. The original one was, yeah. 26. Okay. 26. December 26. Thank you. 2019. Okay. Okay. Oh, all right. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Council of Staff meeting of uh, April 20th, 2020. Uh, this was immediately following our special public meeting that we just concluded. Uh, may I have roll call, please? Councilman Sakawa. Councilman Sakawa. Here. Here. Councilman Massari. Councilman Massari. Here. Here. Councilman Tanella. Here. Here. Deputy Mayor Peterson. Here. Mayor Vargo. Here. Um, in accordance with the provisions of the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10-4-1, please take notice that the Township Council of the Township of Cedar Grove will conduct a special public meeting. Uh, I have the same one from the last one. Do we, I don't need to read that again. That's right. You can just say that it was updated. You can just say that it was updated. And the date that it was updated. Okay. Okay. You to accommodate okay, for the telephone conference. Meeting call. on April 20th. Okay, via conference call and not in the council chamber of the meeting of the municipal building. building. Okay, official, uh, the previously scheduled staff meeting, uh, I have the same phone number applied to that. But bear with me. Okay, that's applied to both dealing with the bond ordinances. Give me one second, everybody. I have to just open this up. Go to my other agenda. Okay, Ms. Dutt, I don't have on the um, the other agenda for this meeting. Um, I only have the form that indicates that it's for this the pending bond ordinance eight five six eight five seven eight five eight. What so let me go ahead. It was in the packet. The public notice. Yeah, I have the packet here in my email. Um, and the first page of the packet for this meeting um, has only has the, the original the notice from the special public meeting. Mm -hmm. Great. Eight five six eight five seven eight five eight. There were two packets. There were two packets. Okay. Yes, I have both. Mayor, you're looking for the agenda? Are you looking for the agenda? No, I'm looking for the public notice. Oh. All in information. Do I have to read that? It's the same, it's the same information that information. because the meetings are back to back, okay. the call in number okay. is. Yeah, the same just as just as above the agenda, there should be the public notice. Okay, okay. Mr. Let, me, let me just go ahead and read this, and Mr. Tamaro, you tell me if it's, if it's adequate. I'll, I'll adjust it as, as appropriate. In accordance with the provisions of the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act and JSA and 4 1, please take notice that the Township Council of the Township of Cedar Grove conducted a special public meeting on Monday, April 20th, 2020, at 7 p.m., via conference call in the Council Chambers. Uh, the public will be able to listen to the meeting and participate during public comments by calling 1-866-305-0232, entering the participatory code 933-490 on the day and time of the meeting. And um, Mr. Chimarero, an adequate notice of this meeting was duly provided to the Corona Cedar Grove Times from Star Ledger by email and published in the annual schedule of meetings December 26, 2019. Filed with the council clerk and posted on the public bulletin board in the municipal building lobby in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act. I think that's the session. It did. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Shimbrough. Okay. Um, 
Item two on the agenda, approval of minutes, 2A staff meeting, February 10th, 2020. Got a motion. I'll make a motion to approve, Mayor. This is Councilman Sakala. Do I have a motion? The Councilman Mayor, make the motion. Mayor, there we go. Now I hear you guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I made a motion to I approve, motion Mayor. To approve this is Councilman Sakala. Councilman Sakala. I'll second it. I'll second it. Uh, Councilman Sari on the second. Thank you. Um, roll call, please. Councilman Sakala. Yes. Yes. Councilman Manfari? Yes. Yes. Councilman Tanella? Yes. Yes. Deputy Mayor Peterson? Yes. Mayor Vargo? Yes. Uh, so now we have all of our, our township reports. Um, and just for the uh, public education, we're, we are going to follow the same format that we've been following for the past two meetings uh, and address all COVID-19 uh, topics before we get into the individual reports. Uh, we collectively feel that this is the most efficient and productive way to address all of those items. So um, we're, we're, the goal is to follow up with this order as well. Uh, any, any comments or questions on this item or any of the items that we discussed throughout the meeting, there will be a public comment period at the end of this particular meeting of which we'll open it up and you can ask any question that you um, that you would like to. Um, so first and foremost, um, our thoughts and prayers go out to all of the um, the residents who have tested positive. We hope and pray for a very speedy recovery. Our thoughts and prayers go out to all the residents that we lost. Um, I can tell you that you know, this hits us all very, very hard when we see these numbers. Um, and we see the very, very real impact that COVID-19 has. Uh, and when we lose, um, when you lose anybody, um, and we've all that sit here, we all know somebody that we've lost, or we know somebody who has, who, who knows somebody that, that, that uh, lost their battle with COVID-19. And uh, on behalf of myself, the entire council, the township of Cedar Grove, um, our thoughts and prayers go out to every single one of you uh, we're all thinking of you, we're all praying for you. I, I want to say this, um, we're going to get through this. And, and it's important that we start thinking that, that we continue to wake up every day and that we continue to fight, that we don't lose that fight, that we fight through this every single day. We wake up with purpose and we, we will get through this together. Um, if you don't have anybody to rely on or to call, I can tell you, every single one of these council members here, I know them um, personally, professionally. Every single one of these council members and every single every single township employee on this call will pick up the phone, drive to your house, just to say hello, or if you need something, if you need anything, if you need groceries, um, you can reach out to our township manager. We do have um, businesses within our town and within our community who have reached out to us. Who have said, "Hey, look! If there's anybody eat within Cedar Grove, um, please let us know." So we encourage you, if you are listening, if you're listening uh, on a tape recording of this, or if you're listening to this live, please reach out to us. Um, we will get you uh, whatever it is that you need, the appropriate help that you need. Uh, but every single one of us, we're all here for you. So let's continue to fight through this. We're going to get through this as one Cedar Grove. Stay strong. Um, so with that, I'm going to um, open up. Uh, I'd like to talk in a consistent flow. If we can talk, Mr. Tucci, about our current COVID positive test results. And if we could, within that discussion, if we can include, include a discussion of the senior facilities and how that impacts our numbers and what percentage that is. Okay, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Tucci, you're good? Uh, you're good? Uh, okay. First, first of all, I'd like to start out by uh, indicating the total number of cases. I just got a, the county uh, report, which is at uh, 1,900 hours, which is as of 7 o'clock tonight. And the numbers are that there are 209 current cases of COVID-19 in Cedar Grove. Of that, 53% of the township's confirmed cases are located in our uh, care facilities, uh, and of that, 
they were, was a little change on the death report. They're reporting that 32 of the 36 cases are, are located in these facilities. Uh, also, I'd like to uh, report a little bit further on the status of where we are township wise. Uh, our police department is at full strength. A lot of police departments have COVID-19 attacker departments. As of today, thank God, we have not had one case located in our department. Our, our, our force is at full strength, so everybody's working as they should. Our fire department is at full strength also. There have been no reported cases there. Uh, unfortunately, our ambulance and rescue squad is temporarily out of service right now, but Atlantic Corporation, they're located physically at 14 Cedar Street. They are physically here for our residents to serve any EMS uh, needs. As of today, there were 57 calls that Atlantic has uh, responded to. Also, uh, some new uh, updates from the state of New Jersey. Uh, the New Jersey Office of Emergency Management has secured what they call the Vitelli Critical Care Decontamination System. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna help uh, healthcare providers and our uh, nursing home facilities free of charge they'll be able to decontaminate their existing N95 masks, which is gonna save a lot of money rather than use them and dispose of them. You can call the state, they'll come in with their machine, they'll decontaminate all the masks and you will be able to reuse them at, at that point. Also, uh, I just wanna put out this out for the Cedar Grove High School. I know uh, high school principal Rick Mangilli uh, put this out earlier that uh, as far as uh, senior parents are concerned and our traditional year-end celebrations that uh, he has moved the junior and senior proms to Tuesday, July 14th, so that you know, these, these children are not cheated out of you know, the ceremonies that you know, they look for their whole lifetime to go through school. And also uh, graduation ceremonies, uh, hopefully will take place sometime in May or early June, you know, God willing. Also, um, yes, go ahead. Mr. Tucci, if we could, before we get too far away, uh, I think we there's a lot, a lot of good information that you just provided. If we could maybe um, take a step back on the, uh, just if we go back to the first item, which is the, the senior facility. Yes. Um, if, if I could, you know, there's a lot of information that's flowing um, on the senior facility. And I think it's important if we just touch on that because some of the information that we get from the state um, and um, some numbers may be higher with the state, but so we can talk about how residential status, uh, you know, I should say that, let me rephrase that, where that individual resides impacts the, the potential numbers associated with each senior facility. Okay, well, along that line, along that uh, line the uh, county sends us uh, a situational report twice daily. Normally they come at nine o'clock in the morning and at seven o'clock at night. Uh, their numbers they receive from the state health department who gets them from CDC. And again, in the situational report, it indicates that the actual numbers in these facilities are probably a lot higher, but how they attribute them to your community is in long-term care, long care facilities, the long-term care per patients are listed as Cedar Grove residents. The short-term care patients get listed back in the communities where they come from. So you may have somebody in a nursing home that tests positive but lives in some other community. They'll be attributed to that other community. So, so the numbers, numbers that, that we're, we're reporting are the only the ones that are that are attributed to Cedar Grove, which CDC has sent to us. So there are going to be uh, conflicting numbers out there. You know, I'm sure if you go on the state website you'll see a much higher number than what the number that we're reporting. But those cases are not attributed to Cedar Grove, they're attributed to the community where those people live. So I hope that clears up a little bit. I actually forgot that it happened before. No, I think it does. Uh, and it's important to, for the residents to know that the information that we get comes from the state through the county. So both the state gets the information, then the state flows it to the county. And then we take that information directly from the county, and that's how we report on our numbers. And again, those numbers are adjusted daily, twice a day. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Is there any um, 
on that, before we keep going, um, just to try to keep things somewhat organized, are there any comments from any council members on any of the topics that the community has, has discussed so far? Uh, yeah, Mayor, may I yeah, have, a moment? have a moment? Please, uh, Councilman Sakala. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah. in the past, or at least in the recent past, we've had some issues with reporting what's going on in nursing homes because of HIPAA, uh, and we really couldn't say much. But um, I think it's really uh, important to point out that the State Department of Health today, actually just a couple hours ago, released um, the numbers for every nursing home in the state of New Jersey, and it's on the state of New Jersey uh, Department of Health website. Website, website, and it's being widely being reported, being reported right now, in, right now uh, on nj.com NJ and NJ.com. And, and, and I think it's important, think it's important um, that, um, that what Mr. Tucci like just Mr. said Tucci just is realized by everybody, everybody uh, when, uh, when, uh, when they start to see these numbers. Start to see these numbers. Uh, because uh, because uh, when you look at the numbers, uh, it's broken down not only by town, but by each individual nursing home within our town, of which we have five. Long-term uh, long facilities, uh, facilities, short -term short -term facilities, have, facilities have at least one, least I'm, aware one of, I'm aware of, the mixture of both. The mixture of both. But, um, but um, they're reporting, uh, they're reporting positive, positive, um, as 244, 244 five nursing homes, homes and, and, uh, the, uh, and deaths, and deaths 48. In those, uh, in those, uh, those five, five nursing homes. So I really wanted to make sure that when people see those numbers tomorrow in the news, tomorrow, news um, that, um, that uh, it's not that uh, we're not, that being we're not being consistent. It's consistent. just that the it's way the numbers, numbers are being reported, and perhaps some of the unfortunate people who were affected by the disease were not seen as residents, although they were in short term care for um, I think that's a good clarification, and I'm glad you brought that up because there is, um, I think there's a distinction between the numbers that are reported by the state um, because that's associated with the, the facilities, and the, the numbers that the township reports on are associated exclusively with the township. So I think it's a, a very good point, and I appreciate you bringing that up. Uh, any other comments from the council on those items that Mr. Tucci has discussed so far? Okay. Um, Mr. Tucci, I don't want to interrupt your flow. I'm sure you're going to follow a similar, similar agenda for so yes. um, if you want to keep, continue. Yes, you yes, to I do. Uh, the the next report. thing I wanted to report on was the uh, PPA, personal protection equipment, and the disposal of it. I think our, our residents are doing a much better job now, along with our Department of Public Works has been out there on a daily basis picking things up. I've been to the Food Town parking lot and a couple of the other lots in town on a daily basis and everything seems to be, I want to thank Food Town. They, they seem to be doing a good job of keeping an eye on it. They have waste disposal baskets with signage on it. So uh, the town seems to be uh, pretty clean. Uh, as far as operational wise, uh, municipal building is still closed down physically to physically come here, but all the other attributes and things that people need are open. We have the drop box on the side uh, in the event that you need to pay your taxes or your water bill. Uh, you, you can get a building permit by appointment and make arrangements to have inspections, but there is a protocol that needs to be followed with that. Uh, all township officials can be uh, contacted by telephone, fax, or email. Uh, all our recreation programs at this point are still on hold until the governor uh, releases uh, the public uh, and allows us to continue with our daily routines, which probably will not be the same. Uh, it's safe to say that uh, we go any further along, uh, recreational programs may be canceled at this point and refunds issued at that point. Uh, as far as the town pool is concerned, go ahead. Mr. Sushi, if I could, um, yeah. on the refunds, a couple of residents have asked me about yeah. that. Uh -huh. um, you know, so we have, we have our rec facilities, our, our rec programs that are run by Maurice Landalby. Yes. And then we also have some other um, programs such as the Cedar Grove Junior Baseball Club. I know a lot of people reach out to Marisa on something like that. How um, should we be directing them to somebody else? Uh, or should we be directing everybody to Marisa and then let them uh, let her provide that information? Well, 
uh, you, you can just do it either way. If you're like a private organization like Cedar Grove Junior Baseball or Junior Football, you can contact either them directly or you can contact Marisa, who has close contact with them. Uh, but as far as the TAMREC programs, refunds for our programs will come from us, us, obviously, and anything from these other organizations will come directly from them. But there will be a coordination because those, program, those organizations use our fields. So if our fields are closed, they will not have programs at that point. Right. right. Um, it might make sense if, if, if everything is canceled for the season um, that we put together a central document or a way to request forms. Because I know a lot of these, these programs, uh, aside from Marisa, a lot of these programs are run by volunteers. And, um, you know, you don't want them over overrun with requests for refunds. So maybe we can figure out a way to coordinate with them or get some information from them as to how refunds should be requested. Well, so uh, we re re refunds will only come from the town. Volunteers uh, 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 will not be, they'll get the information, but everything will come directly from the township regarding refunds on programs. And uh, I want to follow up with uh, the town pool. No determination has been made on the town pool. It's still a little bit early. We have time to make that, that call. Uh, we're going to try to get this pool season in, God willing as much as we can, and uh, we'll, we'll make that decision a little bit down the road. Uh, yeah, I know um, some of our council members have some questions on the, on the town pool. Um, but we're, we have a time frame as to when we're going to be looking at that or what process. Is there a drop, you know, a, a, a bottom line date that we need to make a determination as to whether the town pool opens or not based on operations? It's probably going to be early in May. Sometime early in May, a determination will be made one way or another. But we're trying to hold off because we're trying to see what transpires uh, on a state level and what the trickle down effect is. Okay. Thank you. If I, if I could pause there, Mr. Tucci, um, to see if any council colleagues have any questions on any items that you, you've gone over so far. Uh -huh. No, Mayor. No. Okay. All right. All right. Moving right along, uh, the so Cedar Grove Library will remain closed, and that'll be consistent with how the school uh, operates. If school stays closed, we're going to keep the uh, library closed consistent with how the school uh, reopens. If they reopen in mid-May, we'll reopen the library at that point. Uh, senior medical transportation will continue, but it's uh, a different uh, formula that we're following. Uh, anybody that needs a ride to and from to pick up groceries or medical supplies, uh, you order them, we'll drive you to pick them up. But well, we're not doing the normal drop-off route that we normally do, uh, only because we're practicing social distancing at this point. Uh, solid waste and recycling, bulk pickup, that's on the regular schedule. Nothing has changed regarding that, and we will continue that uh, accordingly. Uh, just uh, another note that was in the uh, situational report. Uh, Governor Murphy announced today that the hospital emissions have been, have been lower, uh, and there are some charts on the state website that uh, if anybody's interested, you can see how much of a drop in hospitalization uh, of COVID-19 has been going on. So it, it seems like the, cur the curve is flattening a little bit. If not, we're on the downside. We're still not out of the woods. People still need to practice social distancing, be safe, wear your mask, wear your personal protective equipment, your gloves, and uh, just be safe. That's all I can say at this point. That's all I have, Mary. Uh, thank you, Mr. Tucci. Uh, I want to talk about the, the situational report um, because I, I think it's a, a very, very important, helpful document that we publish daily. Um, if you heard uh, on our from last week before uh, our technical difficulties. Um, the situational report is published daily um, and provides information with regard to our uh, positive uh, COVID numbers, uh, including what um, breakout is associated with our nursing home facilities, uh, and it includes um, important updates. So it's a, it's a long report now. It's about eight or nine pages or so, but um, I, I'll mention this. You don't have to read all eight or nine pages every time you go. Um, Mr. Tucci highlights the changes in the report, so it's, easy, so it's very user-friendly. You can find this report on the township website on the top banner. 
um, where, and you'll note that there is a date associated with each report. And just, uh, just I'd like to add, Mayor, that, uh, for the residents, you'll see that uh, the new information is highlighted in yellow. That's the new information that has been added to the report. Right, right, right. right. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's really a helpful report. So if you do have any questions, we encourage you to uh, to go ahead and, and um, download that report. Mr. Tucci, there are a couple other items, again, in an effort to consolidate um, questions um, and concerns from council colleagues. Um, so you, you've hit on most of them. One of the questions that I think we have all have received so far on numerous occasions is uh, property tax payments. Property tax bills are due on uh, to May 1st, I believe. And um, we've received a lot of questions as to whether those bills will be delayed or um, will be due on time. I know we are, we are um, uh, sort of uh, hamstrung in terms of what we can do with it. So maybe you can explain, um, if you should go mind, explain what our, what our role is in, in that May 1st deadline. Yeah. As far as the tax payments, the state of New Jersey has control over you know, the deadlines on paying. Uh, there was currently a bill on the governor's desk uh, to delay tax payments, which would have a triple effect and basically delay school board payments and county payments. Uh, the governor chose not to sign that, so tax payments are due on May 1st. There is still the 10 day grace period, which is in place. But beyond that, there is no relief uh, from tax payment at this point. And, and I just want to stress um, it's not something, as I understand, it, Mr. Tucci, um, that date and pushing that date is not something that we control at all. No. But, uh, Mayor, uh, along that line, this governing body at the last meeting uh, did push back what they do control. Water and sewer bills, you have enacted uh, an order that you know late charges for 90 days on all water and sewer bills. So the, the piece that you did have control over, you did push it and roll it back to try to give uh, the ratepayers some relief. Thank you. Yes, we did, uh, we did do that. And um, I think this will help with some of those questions. Um, I'm going to pause for a second um, before I get to the next item. If any council colleagues want to jump in and ask a question here or have a comment, hey, you want to can I ask right. the question regarding that? Regarding that? Yes, we'll go ahead, Councilman Terry. Mr. Tucci, just to follow up on that, I know some of the residents in town uh, have applied and were approved with the mortgage forbearance, and they have um, their property tax payments paid by the mortgage company. How do you how do you address those residents regarding you know uh, what can we say to them? Because I believe that they're not they're not going to be paying their mortgage for the at least three months, the first three months second. So how does that impact them for the May 1st deadline? Uh, it, it's my understanding that the mortgage companies that uh, gave that relief are going to pick up and pay their taxes in a timely fashion. And at that point, I think there'll be some adjustment on the back end of the mortgage. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Um, another question that um, I think we're all on the forefront of all of our minds, um, and we want to make sure that we're uh, properly discussing and properly planning uh, for any potential impact. We're already talking about property taxes, um, and that some property, uh, some residents may have some difficulty paying property taxes, and frankly, some businesses may have some difficulty paying property taxes. Um, but in addition to that, uh, we also have likely experiencing some type of uh, decline in, in terms of um, tickets that are given out and, and other revenue streams, whether it be permits. Um, can we just talk about how, what we're doing to plan for that or what we have done in our current budget to plan for any potential dip in revenue, either through property tax or tickets or permits uh, and so on and so forth, Mr. Gucci? Well, Revenue, as, as the revenue is aware, is revenue is always, your current budget based on the previous year's revenue. So this year's budget is fine. There's, there's no issue. Uh, 
we'll, we'll look at the revenues going into the 2021 budget and, and see where the shortfalls are. Uh, the township is not in uh, any financial stress at this point. Uh, financially, we are in very good shape. Our budget can move ahead uh, as, as it was planned. Uh, no services will be cut. Uh, the, the township is in a strong financial position, let me put it that way. And uh, we, don't, we don't foresee uh, any problems with that. Will there be a decrease in revenue? Absolutely. I'm sure court revenues will be down. I'm sure building permit revenues will be down. But we, we will be able to adjust. As far as people not paying their taxes, in every budget, there's a line item for reserve for uncollected taxes. There is an amount of money put there in the event that people cannot pay their taxes, that the township will be able to operate. And also, at the township does have the mechanism at the end of the year, in October, early November, that if somebody doesn't pay their taxes, uh, properties go up on tax sale, and the township uh, gets its money and is always operational at that point. So there are mechanisms to protect against this. Hopefully that we won't get to that point, but uh, as far as the town's finances, I, I had a meeting with the town finance uh, director and uh, we are in good shape. Thank you, Mr. Tucci. Um, before you get to the next time, any, any comments, questions from council? Okay. Um, I think that's good, Mr. Tucci. You know, I think, you know, one of the things that, um, that you've always done is you've always uh, been physically responsible and conservative. Um, you know, when we go through our budget on a yearly basis and we're talking about uh, $225 for pencils or paper based on each department, um, you know, that's the type of detail that we look that we look for and we appreciate. Um, you know, that's, um, and and you've that's been doing this for many years, so we appreciate that. Um, and, you know, I think this is something that we're seeing a lot in the headlines about how townships are, and counties and and the states are going to be impacted by this. Uh, so we appreciate you taking a look at that and having that meeting uh, with the finance director. Um, if I could go on to the next item. Uh, so the next item is a uh, mortgage farm uh, has been raised as a topic. Right. And um, I can tell you that you know, there's the issue that we have, I'll, I'll explain the issue. And then I think that the, the resolution, which is, so the issue is that they have crops and they have um, things that are growing now um, and with closures of, of parks and with the closure of essentially the town, township operations um, and, and public visiting, um, there was a concern that those crops were going to go to waste. Um, I spoke with, uh, I received some concerns from um, the Historical Society um, who uh, operate that farm over there and um, some of the concerns were expressed to me, and I shared those with Mr. Tucci. Um, the resolution, um, assuming that there's no objections here, um, Mr. Tucci, if you want to go ahead and explain what your proposal was. Yes. Well, what, what happens is the uh, Historical Society raises crops through their uh, agricultural program there, and they sell them and they generate revenue. Well, they have X amount of uh, produce there already, and uh, right now there's no mechanism to sell it because of social distancing and gatherings. So and not to make them lose their revenue and to do a public service, uh, I discussed with the mayor earlier that maybe the township will buy the produce and will donate it to a, a food bank or one of these local soup kitchens so that it, it's a win-win, so that we will not make that produce go to waste Nobody will get hurt revenue-wise, and somebody will benefit at the town's expense. And we would do this until the restrictions uh, the, the are So uh, hopefully... Well, we'll, we'll do it for this, this produce uh, session. I mean, beyond this, we can't do this a number, number of times. This will be a one-time thing. Yes. Okay. What we did... Um, let me ask, are there any objections from the, the council on that topic? Okay, hearing that. Um, okay, thank you. Yeah, I think it was a win-win. Um, 
Um, and I think it's, uh, you know, that a lot of the local food pantries are struggling right now. And, um, you know, this was a, a way to make sure that we help more the farm and a way to make sure that we help uh, the, the local communities. Uh, the next item on the, on the topic is uh, we've been talking for years and years and years about a Pompton Ave paving. And um, a year ago, uh, actually six to eight months ago, uh, construction paving on Pompton Ave finally started. And uh, your presence were excited. We were excited. Uh, the question is, uh, how is COVID-19? Do we know how COVID-19 is impacting that paving? I see, uh, I think we all, we all see a lot of the trucks out there, um, which is the saving contract is the zombies out there. Do we have any idea how that's going to impact uh, COVID-19, going to impact the saving, or is it going to continue uh, as planned? Well, it's funny you say that. Uh, we just got in contact with the state on uh, Friday regarding this Friday issue. Regarding this uh, they are continuing uh, they to are work. They're on their, they won't give us a schedule for paving, but I anticipate that it's going to be coming soon. They're wrapping up the final items. Uh, if you take a ride out there, you look at, uh, they're starting work on West Lindsley and Mountain Avenue, that intersection there where Mountain Avenue comes in from North Caldwell. Uh, once that is finished and you'll see that there were a number of uh, concrete repairs done along Pompton Avenue. One was in front of the Ambulance and Rescue Squad that uh, immediately following the cleanup items, the paving will start at that point. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and that's, I think some residents will be excited about, about the paving. Um, I, I have some non-COVID paving questions that I'll, I'll hold to my report. Um, and then, so if I could, I, I think that's everything that we wanted to, I, we talked about in COVID-19. I'm going to open it up to the council for any COVID-19 that you want to address now, and then we'll go into our, our individual reports. Is there any item that we missed or anything? Okay. Okay. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and jump back into the agenda. Um, I had a very on the agenda, of course, of our township manager, Mr. Tucci. Yes. Mayor, I just have a few short items. Uh, number one, there was a water bill adjustment request. I'm going to ask that that be pulled for tonight because I think that needs a little bit more discussion and clarification, if that's okay with the governing body. No objection. Okay. No objection. All right. Uh, next, we have a request for a waiver of developer's agreement. It's for the property next to uh, uh, the uh, orthodontist over here on Pompton Avenue. Uh, there are no public uh, improvements being made. Everything is on site. Uh, there's letters in the packet uh, from the uh, township engineer and construction official uh, agreeing to that. So the request is that we waive the developer's agreement in this instance. And there's a resolution. On there's also a resolution on the later on the agenda. Right, 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 right. Seven A on the correct. Uh, yes. Correct. Okay. All right. I see that. Uh, also, uh, later on, there's a memo uh, from Alex Palumbo uh, recommending award of the contract for the roof at Morgan's Farm. As we all know, that's an historical site, so only we can have historical contractors do the roof. It was very hard to find somebody, but we finally found somebody, and we'd like to go ahead and get moving on that work there also. And that's all I have for this evening, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Tucci. And just on that um, point, on the roof for uh, Morgan's Farm, it's just so the public education, the process that was pub a publicly based process, went to the lowest qualifying bidder, um, which was, I believe, at uh, thirty-eight thousand or something like that. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, and that will be started when. Uh, you just mentioned that as soon as possible. As soon as we have the pre-construction yeah. meeting. Pre meeting. Because before pre-construction meeting. Before every uh, project that's done in town, there's a pre-construction meeting to figure out how it's going to be mobilized and police required. There's a whole bunch of details that have to be worked out. But I, I would assume as long as the contractor is available, that that should be within the next 30 days. Yes. Wait, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, there's got to be a resolution to the award. We're just getting authorization to put it on the agenda to award it. Okay. 
But once once that happens within 30 days, that'll that'll be completed. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chief. Anything else? That's it. Thank you, Mr. Tucci. Appreciate it. Appreciate all your hard work and everything that you do for the town. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, okay, item four on the agenda um, reports of the council attorney, Mr. Samarero. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I don't really have anything uh, to report. I know that the, uh, the, the documents that were uh, provided had uh, a proposed ordinance with respect to uh, the uh, rent control board. Uh, and uh, it's, it's self explanatory. If, if you wanted to get into it, I would, but uh, it's really not anything deep. Uh, I'm okay. Um, did any council members or Mr. Tucci, do you want to discuss? No, I, I think it's pretty innocuous. You know, so I, I really don't think we need to go into that. So that should be placed on the next meeting agenda. It was okay to put it on the uh, agenda for the next meeting. Okay, that's fine with me. Uh -huh. um, anybody else? Okay. No objection. Okay. Thank you. 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 Mayor, uh, Mayor, here's uh, one uh, item that I, you know, that I left out. In the packet, there is information regarding uh, 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 naming of the uh, COA Council. I think we had a proposal from Serenian yeah. Associates. And I believe there was another firm also. Uh, I just want to get that done. Mr. Jaziniak's Yeah, Mr. Jaziniak's firm. Uh, I think Mr. Jaziniak broke off from Mr. Serenian. So uh, there are two proposals there. At this point, we're pretty far along with the Serenian firm. So for the remainder of this year, my recommendation would be to uh, finish it out with the Serenian. And then if you're going to uh, entertain a change. Uh, do it at the beginning of the year as we normally do the awards of uh, these contracts. Uh, that makes sense to me. Uh, is there any comments or questions from any of the council? No, Mayor. No. 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 Okay. Uh, Mr. Chief, I think that makes All sense. All right, so we'll put a resolution out uh, for the next meeting awarding, uh, awarding the contract, the, for, the the contract for the rest of the year. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank okay. You. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Mr. Timmer. No, that's okay. Uh, Mr. Timmerero, is there any other items that you have or is that it? That's it. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, point five on the agenda. Um, Ms. Sutz, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I only have, um, I only have um, two short information pieces. One is um, the primary election date has been changed from June to July 7th, 2020. And just so the council is aware, um, ABC licenses usually expire June 30th and licensees are required to submit their renewal applications. Um, and the council is required to renew those applications prior to July 1st. However, the state has extended um, the expiration period the licenses will be extended until September 30th, so the renewal applications have to be filed by the licensees by September 30th, 2020. Thank you, Mr. Sutton. That's it. Anything else, Mr. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much. Okay, item six on the agenda, council report. Um, Councilman Sakala. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a couple of quick comments. I don't really have any anything to report, but I did want to um, say thank you to all the first responders and healthcare workers who are out there on the front lines every day fighting this fight against COVID-19. And um, your uh, thoughts, uh, your, uh, your, uh, what you're doing is are my thoughts and my thoughts and many people's thoughts and prayers every day. Um, um, second, uh, second, I just want to say that my heart goes out, out to all people and families people who have been affected adversely by COVID-19, COVID especially those who have lost family, lost family members and have the uh, ability, uh, ability to uh, grieve uh, properly for those lost family lost members. Family it's members. very difficult, very difficult. And, um, and my heart goes out to all of you as well. And third, I just wanted to touch on a point Mr. Tucci already touched on, 
about the uh, about disposal the, uh, of, of PPE, PPE um, around town. Um, around town. Um, um, and Mr. Tucci did Mr. note that, it's, know that it, it looks to be getting better, and I, I agree. Um, I know we did have a discussion about this two weeks ago um, at our last at our last, at our last meeting, and I just wanted to bring up. Um, I did post this on my Facebook page. I wanted to bring up and make it uh, make a point to say that we do have ordinances which I which I um, I researched. Um, and, we have um, section 168-2, 168-5, 168-7 yeah, 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 of the city of our ordinances of city city And uh, essentially, if you take your gloves and your mask and you throw them on the ground, the ground whether it's in a public roadway or a private, um, dry, uh, private uh, uh, lot like Food Town or CBS, um, and um, you are caught, you are subject to a $2,000 fine and up to 90 days in prison. So I do ask, first of all, I thank, I thank everyone for everyone being everyone more, responsible more responsible and taking uh, care of your, care your, of your, uh, your items that possibly, possibly could harm other people, harm other people uh, and throwing them out properly and disposing of them properly. And, and also, and also just remind everybody just remind that it is a crime to do that, that or at least a violation of a, of, of a borough ordinance, uh, ordinance, an ordinance, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and um, you know, if the police see you or somebody reports you, you will be prosecuted. And that's all I have. Mayor, to have to Mayor, I'd just like to add one thing uh, to piggyback on what uh, Councilman Sakala said. Uh, we're, I'm getting reports that some of the PPE is ending up in the recycling. PPE is trash. It needs to be thrown with the trash. When you throw it in with the recycling, it contaminates our recycling, and our recycling loads are rejected from the recycling companies. So I just want as a reminder to the public. Please dispose of it in the trash. It is not recycled. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councilor Scala, anything else? No, Mayor. Thank you. No, Mayor. Thank you. Um, thank you. I, before I go into the council report, I wanted to make sure that the public is aware. When we go over our COVID-19 topic, um, while you may not hear from our the council, from my council colleagues here and I'm over the topic, I think it's important that everybody knows that these topics are compiled um, uh, with feedback from all of our council colleagues. Uh, so every every one of uh, uh, Council Tacala, Terry, Nell, and Stephanie Mayor Peterson have all contributed to those the COVID-19 agenda items, and I appreciate their feedback on it. So, um, Councilman Misery, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Mayor, uh, I also wanted to echo Councilman Sakala's remarks regarding uh, the thanks to all the employees, first responders, and uh, obviously town manager, clerk, and everyone that works for the municipality for doing such a great job during this difficult time. Um, I also wanted to add more commentary than a report, Mayor, um, which is connected with the COVID crisis. Uh, there's been reports that there's been a drop in domestic violence reports during this period of time. However, that, that's a, a funny statistic because it appears that, you know, these true victims of domestic violence are now stuck home, quarantined, but they're able to properly report um, through the various um, agencies to protect themselves. So I wanted, I wanted the public to know that even though the courthouse may be closed, may be, you know, only open for emergent matters, domestic violence is still a serious priority at the courthouse. Um, the domestic violence hotline, I'll give that number in a minute, is still working 24 hours a day. So you have the ability to make an anonymous call, be able to get help from the domestic violence hotline. Obviously, they can contact our police department, um, but these uh, agencies are still available for, for anyone that is you know, truly a victim. And uh, I wanted to give that information because I found it very interesting that the stats were showing that there was actually a decline. I was surprised about that. I was assuming the opposite. And uh, I want to make sure that the public is aware that they have these resources available. The hotline number is 1-800-572-SAFE, which is 7233. 800-572-7233.
Um, that's all I have that's to report, have Mayor. Again, Mayor, thank you yeah, for, your for your job and reporting to the Board. town. You're doing great work with this. I know it's a difficult time, and we, we appreciate all your efforts as well. Thank you, Councilman. I appreciate it. Appreciate the comments, um, Councilman Tanella. Thank you, Mayor. Good Thank you, Mayor. How, how are you? Um, how are you? Um, I'll echo the the, uh, the sentiment of uh, uh, Councilman um, Sakala and Councilman uh, Sakala. I don't have anything to add on top of what they've already said. On top of what they've already said. Um, and what you've already said. Um, what you've already said. I want to say thank you to you. Thank Mr. You, Tucci you, and yourself, Mr. Tucci uh, and yourself uh, continuing uh, to stay on top of this. Keep our residents informed. Keep our residents informed. Thank you. I just want to make one comment. The mayor noted to me that outside of his wife, I, he talks to me more than anyone else. So I think we're in contact constantly. <laughs> I, can, I can validate that comment. I said that to him earlier today. <laughs> um, very true. Um, Deputy Mayor Peterson, good evening. Good evening, Mayor. Um, I don't have a report either. I just echo everyone's sentiment and thank um, all of our first responders, our police, everyone who's uh, doing everything that they can to help us get through this. And I also thank you to you and Mr. Tucci for really going above me. And I know this is, this is a lot, and uh, it's greatly awesome. So thank you. Thank you, Deputy um, Mayor. Thank you, um, I have a couple of items that I, I just want to discuss. I think it's important that we, we highlight some of the things that we're doing that are non-COVID related um, and some of the hard work that, our, that the entire council has put together. Uh, the first one I, I want to acknowledge is, um, if you haven't noticed, if you haven't been at town hall, we have the electric car charging stations that have been installed and updated. Um, and I want to thank Councilman Misery uh, for his efforts in bringing that idea to the township um, and Mr. Tucci for bringing that uh, together. I know we haven't, um, there hasn't been much of a reason lately for ours to go sit there in charge, especially with it being closed. Uh, but I think that was an important effort and I think it was an effort looking forward for our community. And um, I wanted to just highlight that because I think it's an important positive in the, especially in the world that we live in now that things are still moving. So. Thank you, Councilman Terry, for that effort. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to Good highlight job. that for the public. Thank you, Mr. Tucci. Um, there's one other item, uh, or a couple other items. Um, the paving on Bradford, Mr. Tucci, uh, when you get down to the corner of Bradford and Ridge, I know it was, it was paved at the end of the paving season last year, and I have raised this in one of our council meetings. Um, when you go down to that corner of Bowden and, um, uh, I'm sorry, Bradford and Ridge, the paving is just deteriorating. And if you look at the seams, even when you get out a little bit further towards Compton Ave on Ridge Road, uh, from Ridge Road, and you look at the seam on that paving, um, it's quite disappointing. And it doesn't look like it's going to last for any bit of it. So I'm not talking just about the corner. Um, Take a look at that theme. I'm just getting, I'm a little bit concerned with that. I know it's a county road, but I want to bring that to your attention. Mayor, along that line, I uh, had a meeting with uh, county officials last week regarding Bradford. Uh, what happened was, and, and ironically, it was not the contractor's fault. He got bad asphalt material from the plant. So what's going to happen is there's going to be a repaving of Bradford Avenue from Pompton Avenue all the way up to Ridge and then from Ridge all the way up to the Montclair line. And that's going to take place within the next two weeks. I'm just waiting for the uh, notification of when it's actually going to happen so we can put it on our website and let our residents know. But that whole area is going to be remilled and repaved from Compton Avenue all the way up to the Montclair line. That's fantastic. I bet it's much needed. Much, much needed. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think it would have been that year. Um, thank you for that, Mr. Tucci. Um, the next item, uh, again, dealing with paving, somewhat COVID related, but not really, um, the paving on Pompton Ave, when we get that schedule, you know, our, our downtown businesses are already severely impacted by COVID-19. 
and they are largely, largely relying on uh, residents and, and for customers to be able to drive up to their location, stop there, and uh, grab a cup of coffee or you know, walk into the UPS store. Um, I think it's, it's um, I'm, I'm thinking specifically for Cedar Beans in that section that's there, which is the sections of stores that are open, Giuseppe, Cedar Beans. Um, when we find out the paving schedule, I just think, I think it's super important that we make sure that uh, that paving schedule, those businesses are made aware of what's going on. Because I know that we had some difficulties last year um, and there was some road work being done I just think if we if we had those similar situations that we had last year where they were do, looking for gas leaks and certain repairs in front of some of these businesses, it would just devastate them. So I just want to put that on your radar, Mr. Pucci, if we can somehow coordinate that. I don't want to see these businesses hurt anymore. Than our well, Mayor, wherever possible, we're probably going to uh, do half the road, ask them to at least to do half the road at a time. This way there'll be at least a traffic flow. I don't envision them shutting the whole roadway down on Route 23. So I'm going to have our traffic safety officer, you know, uh, lay some of these parameters out and see what can be worked out. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I think the businesses will greatly appreciate that. Um, I have one more item and then uh, a topic of social distancing. Um, the landscaping, Mr. Tucci, we talked about um, landscaping under the trestle at one point in time and just cleaning that trestle area up, getting some plantings put in there, um, recognizing where we are in the state of the world and uh, economy. Um, I just was wondering if that's still possible to get that done. I think it would be a nice, uh, lively you know, way to brighten up that downtown area and bring some change and some positivity down there. Uh, as a matter of fact, Mayor, uh, the township engineer and I uh, met out there last week He's getting proposals to have a concrete mason do some plaster work on there. We're waiting for those proposals to come in. Once we have that completed, then we'll do the landscaping. Because if we put the landscaping down before the concrete work, they'll end up trampling and ruining everything. But that, that whole plan is still in effect to uh, do those improvements. I talked to uh, Deputy Commissioner of DOT, Joe Batoni, about this. He gave me an approval to uh, make those improvements. So we are a go at this point. I appreciate that. That's fantastic. Uh, thanks for following up on that. I really do appreciate that. Sounds like advisory committee as well. Uh, and the last comment that I have is just on social distancing. Um, you know, I know as we sit here in, in Cedar Grove and we hear some um, positive news coming that we're either reaching a plateau or the numbers are declining. Uh, I think it's important that we all remember not to keep uh, not to take our, our, our foot off the pedal, uh, not to relax any of the, the social distancing efforts that we put in place. Um, you know, keep in, keep in mind um, that it's important that we continue to do this. I, I know um, I, I hear stories about in-laws. I mean, I'll just share a story about my in-laws. Um, you know, they come over. I have four young children. Um, they come over. They stand 30 feet away. And I have to put a barricade around them. Uh, and I have to put a barricade around them because one of my four kids will inevitably try to run up to them. Um, so we make sure that they are completely blocked off. And my my kids have not hugged their grandparents um, since the quarantine started. So you know we're all putting in that effort. And I just you know I please and I encourage and I must stress that every resident continue to do that until we get through this. Please, please continue to social distance. We see some light at the end of the tunnel. We must keep pushing. Um, and I just wanted to mention that um, before, uh, as my last item on, on, on my report. Mayor, Mayor, I'm at okay. Councilman Mayor, Tell, I, 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 I wanted to raise a question. I forgot to read for my report here at the moment. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, please, uh, uh, you know, thank for you. For uh, Mr. Uh, I, I saw some uh, I, I saw comments some, uh, and I, I received uh, a few comments. I guess that could be going on on the West Essex Trail. Is that properly a rope off or is there a police tape on that? Because what I'm hearing from the residents is that they're not sure if they're going to be able to get to the trail. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to be able to get to the trail. 
our residents our are, residents are, are hearing, hearing, hearing to be stable, but there are but other there people, are people, especially behind especially uh, the residents who live down by the Glen or that part of the trail that goes behind their houses. We're still seeing a lot of activity on that trail. And I'm, 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 yeah, I'm not sure how we can do that or how that's being, you know, what the terms are there for them. Uh, uh, response to that, uh, Councilman Cannell. I know the police chief has been in contact with the county police regarding that. Uh, I know they did put some caution tape up. There was some on at the Baton Road entrances to, to the trail, and uh, mm -hmm. I think they were following up. But we did get the same complaints from the residents down at the Glen. What it is, it's not Cedar Grove residents. These are residents from other places looking for open spaces. They're driving to these locations. Matter of fact, they're parking on our city, on our town streets, and they're accessing these locations. So that's why the police have been doing a very good job with trying to move these people along, even though you know we're, we're not looking to arrest anybody. We just want you to obey, by, uh, follow the rules and obey what, what laws are out there. And right now, the, that trail is off limits to anybody. It's closed, correct? The county has it's closed that trail? And the county has closed them, yes. And if you look at right. all the county parks, whether it be Brookfield Park, Anderson Park, up by the old tool center, the county has closed off all these areas. Even at Mills Reservation, the parking area, they closed it off because they don't want people in concentrated areas. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. Okay. Uh, so that's all that I had on my council report. So moving on to item seven A on the agenda. Uh, to consider a resolution concerning waiver of developer agreements 90 days before any penalty is assessed. Penalty yeah, is assessed. Yeah, make a motion to approve. Uh, that's uh, Councilman Pinella on the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Councilman Cicero. Second. Councilman Cicero. Second. 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 Um, these are some of the bills that we do control as a township, um, and we um, collectively agreed to waive any water sewer bill penalties uh, for 90 days. Uh, Mr. Tucci, uh, do you, can you provide a little bit more detail on that for the public? Uh, yes. As the resolution reads, uh, the, uh, the pay dates are March 1st, April 1st, and May 1st, uh, uh, water billing. And it depends on you know when your section of town gets the bill, and what will happen is you'll have a waiver on all fees and penalties for 90 days. But after the 90 days, if you don't pay, you'll pay the penalty and fees back to day one. So the waiver is for the 90 days and not beyond. Thank you, Mr. Tucci. Uh, I had a motion. I had a second. Uh, have a roll call, please. Councilman Sakala. Yes. Councilman Massari. Yes. Yes. Councilman Tanella. Yes. Deputy Mayor Peterson. Yes. Mayor Vargo. Yes. 
Item B on the agenda, approval of bills. Be it resolved that the summary of bills having been duly audited and found correct are hereby ordered paid in the amount of $4,514,816.74. Motion. Make a motion to approve. Thank you, Councilman Scala. I'll second that, Mayor. I'll second that, Mayor. Uh, thank you, and thank you, Councilman Terry. Roll call, please. Councilman Sakala. Yes. Yes. Councilman Nasseri. Yes. Yes. Councilman Tanella. Yes. Deputy Mayor Peterson. Yes. yes. Six eight nine six. Hearing none, okay. we'll go to the next caller. Caller seven eight zero zero. Lisa Fisher for Granite Drive. Do you guys recommend we do? Yeah. Good evening. Do you recommend we do call someone? I mean, I know the Glen's got their issue with the West Essex Trail. We've got you know, the entrance to Mills Reservation up here just off the normal. You know, do you recommend we call the town police? Do we call the county sheriff? What's your course of action? My, my, my recommendation, Lisa, this is a uh, conversation. My recommendation is that you call the town police and we will notify the county. Okay. Yep. Know that it's yep. We don't. We don't want to make it more difficult for our residents. We will do the legwork for you. Okay. No problem. Appreciate that. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Anything else? No, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining. We appreciate it. Uh, okay. Next. Uh, next phone number. Caller three four six three. Uh, yes, uh, Leo Stringer for High View Terrace. And I'm doing, doing well. Thank you. thank you guys. Thank you for everything you're doing. Oh, it's very difficult. And um, I'm actually on the other end of the trail, out in above the town pool, where it's up the road off down. And I actually watched the um, Cedar Fleet 
talked to some of the mountain bikers yesterday and told them to kind of think, and then his thing and went away. But literally, as soon as they drove away, with my kitchen booked out on the trail, I literally counted 35 people. Mostly the bikers were the problem. The bikers pushed past the walkers. And without any regard. So I don't know if there's anywhere we can handle it. Other than the signs, there are signs on the trail, but there's no sign on the trail from Bowden to the town pool. But what people are doing, they're looking at the signs, either they're ignoring them, but actually walk, or actually they're going around, oh, this trail's not close. So then they go down the town pool trail. They think it means it's close. Oh, but most of them are just kind of ignoring signs. I think a lot of them are not going to today. Some of them are in the water. And they park on a week. So we began parking temporarily on, on Bowden. Because between Highview and Lakewood, there's really no reason for anyone to park there unless they're using the trucks. No residents have been living there have to park. There's no houses. Um, maybe we can have a look at any parking. Or should we? I don't. I mean, I called a couple of times, but I don't want to hassle the the police because it's just because it's, I know it's a fine line with the county. No, I understood, Mr. Stringer, and um, perhaps uh, we could take a look. Mayor, at that. Mayor, uh, if I may, Mayor, I'll, I'll take a look I'll at that if we can't that. get the signal sign where it's necessary. Thank you, Mr. Tucci. Yeah, so they, yeah, people are pretty much just ignoring you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Stringer, is there anything else? Uh, no, that's it. Thanks so much. Thank you for joining, Mr. Stringer. Uh, caller? Caller 4634. Hearing none, we'll go to the next caller. Caller Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Mr. Young. Thank, good evening, Mr. Young. Thank you for calling in and thank you for all of your efforts as volunteers in our community. Um, we appreciate you calling in and uh, listening here. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, next one. Okay. Caller 2380. 2380. No questions. Thank you. Next. Caller 7791. Hi, this is Steve Benrich, 6 Young Avenue. Uh, no questions, but I just want to echo the comments that the town council is doing a great job and we greatly appreciate the, not only the daily updates on the report, but the weekly calls. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bender. We appreciate you calling in uh, and joining us on the past few meetings, which we, we do appreciate. Thank you so much. Next caller. Caller 2900. 2900. No comments. Thank you. Thank you. Last call. Last call. That was the last, Max. That's, That's it. Last call. That was the last one. Okay, yes. Great. Okay. Um, and I will say that if there's any other comments or questions um, from any of the callers, please feel free to email us. Um, our, all of our emails can be found on the township website. Uh, but having no more questions, I'm going to close this portion of the meeting and move on to uh, adjournment. Uh, do I have a motion for an adjournment? So move, Mayor. So move, Mayor. So move, Mayor. Motion to adjourn, Mayor. Okay, I heard Councilman um, Sakala on the motion uh, and, and Deputy Mayor Peterson on the second, it sounded like. And uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all.
for a productive meeting. We appreciate it. Everyone stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you too much. Thank you. Bye. Have a good night. Good night, everyone.